after this event is done, all the things that I shoot today, I'm gonna run through my process of editing. I'm gonna get with Nathan and find out if there's a way that I can show everybody here what I created today while we're walking around the truck. Some of the photos that Ford has loved the most that I've shared with them are up close, small snippets from the vehicle. You know, again, I mentioned we we're talking about hashtags. I talked about the word Badlands. That's the addition that this is. And there's a badge on the side that says Badlands. So knowing that that's one of their key marketing points, I'll make sure that I'll do an interesting shot that features this badge. I'm playing all right now, like really wide. So 17, so I'm gonna get up really tight to the badge. The badge will be in focus. I'm gonna stop down. I'm sorry, open it up to like F2.8 so that the badge is in focus and we're gonna lose the back of the truck. It's just gonna blur out. A little more artistic, a little more creative, a little more on brand for me as well. So again, open her up to 2.8. I'm gonna get it nice and tight to this badge. Take that shot. And if anybody wants to see what I'm shooting or what the, the images are coming out like, I'm gonna recompose and I'm gonna give a little bit more out here. Now, again, we're trying to simulate kind of this off-road look here. That little strip of road is gonna be an easy clone job in Photoshop. So I don't mind putting in a little bit of extra work. Again, wide, lots of foreground leading up to the vehicle, landscape version of it. Because it's one thing to show back of camera and have me talk about the settings, but the finished product is a different animal completely. And again, that goes back to like that last slide of the first part of the presentation was, it's for me, it's all about the end game. It's the end of the road, the editing, all that is where all of it really comes together. So again, wanted to reshoot this. I had too much up here that didn't make sense. It didn't add anything to the photo. So now I gotta get a little bit tighter. that something to pay attention to as you're shooting it's easy to kind of get on a roll and just pop 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 and just start shooting photos not real rising was crooked things like that so take your time with it make sure you're getting all those those details that matter for your shop for your client um since i've jumped onto the sony camp i feel like the sensor on this gives me enough dynamic range to where 85 percent of the time a single shot if it's exposed fairly properly, I can recover highlights and shadows well enough. If I'm shooting indoors um, and it's gonna be delivered and I'm gonna want everything exposed as well as possible, I might bracket at that point. But generally, um, even under light like this, single frame for me most of the time, 85% of the time for sure. Um, really far into the evening or really early in the morning, blue hour, probably benefit from bracketed shots. Um, but man, I've shot sunrise shots with this and the side of my truck is black and I pull out the shadows and you can see every little bit of detail in it. So it's gonna be equipment dependent. So that goes back to the shoot with what your equipment allows you to do. You know, if you feel like your camera doesn't have the dynamic range from a single shot, bracket your shots, merge them in Photoshop or whatever, or uh, Lightroom or whatever software you're using to blend an HDR and go that route. And I'd be best to err on the side of caution and bracket anyways, you know. If you're not sure of what the capabilities are of your equipment. So, I'm trying to, again, portray that we're outdoors feel. We're not like behind a store, like off the main street here. Staging and environment and location. So I've got all this golden rod in front of me here to help hide the road if I get down low, keep this in the foreground town and not off-roading somewhere up north through a field. So for a shot like this, I'll probably turn on my rear display, get down low into the flowers here, the goldenrod, and focus on the vehicle. That's the most important part of the, the whole reason we're here shooting this, the whole, the whole client aspect of it. So flowers in focus, that's something that I'm concerned with. So I might focus and recompose, focus on the truck, bring in a bunch more foreground. Are you doing one, two, four, eight? 
Yeah, I'm trying to get as much light in as I can, and I don't want any of this stuff. This stuff is bonus color contrast against the truck, so I'm shooting like wide open, get a faster shutter speed, and blow out this foreground. I'm gonna redo this one. Portrait because you never know how they're going to use copy in the ads, if they're going to use it in some sort of print use or something like that. Knowing that information up front also helps as well. It'll kind of set the stage for how you're going to go out and shoot. But if you're not sure where an end user will use it, best bet is to go through, for me anyways, and I'll shoot the same frame a couple of different ways. I'm just going to shoot this spiderweb because I think it looks cool. <laughs> I can get focused on it. Everybody has their phone with them, especially for social content. You don't have to be out here with like a red cinema camera shooting something like Michael Bay would. Vertical oriented video, short clips, turn on stabilization if your camera has a mode for that. And just like Panning across, maybe a reveal shot, pull down shots, pull aways, things like that while you're doing it. If you've got your phone with you, throw it along for bonus material. I guarantee whoever you're shooting for is going to be happy that you did that. Especially if you end up, again, in a setting that makes sense for their equipment. Not like that parking lot. But again, kind of faking it here. We have lots of rocks in the foreground here. And earlier, I'm going to kind of conceal where I'm at. Just take advantage of what you have around you to make a shot. You don't all have access to Arctic National Park or Glacier Park, Montana to shoot a product for somebody. Unless you stand a really good. Again, you see me squatting a lot to shoot. This is more in the, the automotive genre, a lot of low angle shots. Again, you want to kind of be dramatic with how the shots turn out. A lot of close wide angle stuff. If any of you see yourselves shooting another genre, does anybody here have an interest in shooting product photography? Yep. So for something like that, lucky you. You probably won't be standing out in the rain. A lot of small scale stuff is staging for you. A lot of it's going to be label presentation is going to be important. Soft light, you said homemade products, things like that. Warmer light is probably going to be something you're going to be looking at. That you don't necessarily again, have to have the best of everything, the best location, the best weather, the best gear, and you can still come out of it with stuff that a uh, client is going to want to use. Last shot I'm going to do here, so your lid does it, you get those starbursts from those lights, LEDs really do that pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I've got these like misty drops in these leaves up front. This one is going to be a trick to explain. I've got a wide lens on it, I've got on it, but... So I am stopped down to... And I've got um, water on the front of my lens. I've got these nice little dots going on. And honestly, I might keep those on there. It just kind of has a character to it. So again, every single bit of it. You don't necessarily want shadows in certain spots, so they'll start bringing in lights to control something like that. I haven't done that personally. Um, I just have a single off-camera strobe that I could use, but I don't think it's 
sufficient for shooting a car. You'd want like a, a six or eight foot parabolic, something that gives you really soft light. Right. Do that. Right. Yeah. But I've seen like even with like a small box if you're if you're honing in on one feature. Yeah. And plus everything else goes dark, so I'll let you do that for me. Yeah, well it's sometimes it's nicer if you can just nail it right out of the camera and save your time. I'm not having to do it in post, but I haven't personally done like like the lettering or something like that. Yeah, if you throw the light with strobes, it's really the way to go. I know a lot of people don't necessarily have all the setup for uh, off-camera lighting. Sure, definitely. Plus wind and blowing it all around. But if it's something that people are going to pursue as a career, yeah, then they, they're going to want to make an equipment like that. Put the 50 on, and I'll show you some fun stuff to do with that. The, the Tamron, because you've got such a wide range, uh -huh. You know, that's not, um, it's going to be simpler to use, but I think that it'll be fun to put that 50 on and work with some of the badging with the way that the So, that's what we like this light. Um, so, so, I'm not, I'm, is that a full frame or is that? So that's the I'm just trying to visualize how fun that is. But what I would do is I would fill most of the frame. I'd leave a little bit of head space or a little bit of space over on the side here. I always like to close with something kind of just a little bit off center. I don't like that it's in like dead center all the time. So I always kind of yeah. skew a little bit. Which is try that's the one thing I'm I'm uh, finding that in photography as in portraits, they're not centering, no, they're well. off setting. Yeah, for sure. So, for this, because this light isn't coming straight out this way, I was kind of leaving it in there and keep that on there because that's the direction that this is facing. So, maybe with the camera being composed with Down this just at the bottom of the frame here, so that's kind of guiding you to what is your main focus for 100 and 200 shutter. As long as you're stable, I think most of them probably think that 